today as we come to graduation, it is, I think, natural for most of us, again, to remember our graduation, our graduations. Some of you have had many, right? As you've continued on through school and learned many different things, you've continued to graduate. Um, so I know as you go to these services and you see the graduates and you know some of the incredible things they have coming for them, right? You are excited for them knowing things in college that are going to be thrilling for them, right? The opportunities they're going to have to meet new friends and learn new things. You know how excited you are for them, right? And we just pray that they will continue to be excited about what's to come and enjoy today's graduation service no matter where it is. And if you have any special stories of your graduation, hopefully today you'll have a chance to share with them with your, with your children or grandchildren or just friends and family. And you can reminisce about the things that happened at your graduation and maybe if you remember anything a speaker shared, um, which I don't know. Let's, let's take a quick poll. How many of you remember anything a speaker said at one of your graduation services? It doesn't matter which one. Anything? Okay, there we go. We got one. Mr. Hanley paid attention to graduation. All right. All right. Good job. Okay. So, I'm not really sure what lesson that holds for you. Um, did they even have a speaker at high school graduation? I can't remember. Did they have someone come up and speak? Do you know who it is? Nope. And you won't tomorrow either. It's okay. All right. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That'd be great. Okay. So, I honestly don't either. Like I said, the only thing I heard my graduations is it stormed. And they were both supposed to be outside, and they were both inside, and in the middle of both of them, high school and college, the power went out. So, that's all I know. I remember that. I didn't learn anything else. So, um, so this passage that we read in Joshua, this is a graduation of sorts. Maybe it's a little bit of a stretch, but hopefully you'll, you'll kind of stay with me, and graduates, hopefully you can stay with me here and figure out how this might be a graduation. Joshua is speaking this graduation service. Joshua doesn't have much life left. Uh, he, he is going to pass away very soon, uh, and he has some things that he wants the people to know. Right? And he's gathered them together. We kind of started this passage a little bit on Wednesday night at youth group, and he's brought all the tribes together, and he's brought all the leaders forward. So all the tribes, you know, be like, here, you're all out there, and we brought the leaders forward, which is what we've done here today, right? We've got a leader sitting here in front of us, and we're all here. So the theory is, you know, there obviously aren't microphones and megaphones and stuff, so Joshua's talking to the leaders, right? Then those leaders are going to go back to their tribes and they're going to tell their tribes what they need to know, right? Same way with these graduates, right? We're sharing with these graduates and they're going to go out into wherever it is they're going to go. Hopefully they'll have a message to share, they'll have some things prepared, and they'll be ready to, to do whatever it is God has for them, and they'll be ready to handle it as leaders. And that's kind of what Joshua is taking care of here. So he's asking the people to put their foreign gods away, right? To graduate for good from these other gods that they followed over years past, right? So as they travel through the land, there's been lots of other gods they've come across, right? I mean, it would similar, you know, if you went through a lot of foreign countries today, you would pass a lot of different churches and temples and all kinds of different religious services going on, right? It's the same way here. As these folks have traveled with Joshua, they've come across a lot of idols and idol worship and a lot of different things. So Joshua, this graduation service is saying it's time to put all those away. We need to get those things gone. That's, that's the direction he is going, right? To graduate those for good. One word might be that to renew their covenant with God, right? To renew their covenant with God. So this is his graduation speech. Um, I'm sure I say the name right. Kylie Basuti. Anybody ever heard that name before? I might not be saying it right, so maybe you have, and I'm saying it wrong. Um, it's an interesting story. Um, and I knew that God wanted me to use that in this message because I was reading a book last week in kind of preparation for this message, and it had this whole story about this girl named Kylie. Um, I was just on the computer. And going through a website called ChristianPost.com, and they post little articles and things like that that you may have missed in the news. And there was a whole post and video about Kylie Basuti. I thought, okay, that's twice in a week. That's not a coincidence. We're going to use that today. Um, and it's her story of putting away these guys. She wrote a book. She was actually, she won this contest to be a Victoria's Secret model, right? 
and had a chance to, to do that. And she realized, as she got into it, that it became her idol, right? The fame, the fortune, the glamour, the attention, like it was all deriving her. That's all she thought about, that's all she wanted to be a part of, was all the attention she got and how much she loved it. She was a believer, um, and through her Bible study and, and counsel, she realized, this isn't, the, this isn't right, right? As a Christian woman, I shouldn't do this, for one, but two, that was her God. The attention, it was just, she realized it was consuming her life, and she had to put it away, just quit, which I don't know how much some of those models make, but I have a feeling it's probably quite a bit, and, and quite a, a big uh, stature as far as that goes, and it was, it was a tough decision. She wrote a book, um, I didn't check that out, but I know she wrote a book kind of just detailing the, the trials and the things she went through. But it's a perfect example of putting that God away, of fame and fortune and money and attention. And all the things that she thought she wanted, she realized, this isn't right. I've got to put those gods away. The people that Joshua is speaking to here, guess what? A lot of them think they need these gods as well. They've had them for a long time, right? What's wrong with them? So he's going to try to help them out here. So let's look at his graduation speech. So in verse 14, he told them to fear the Lord and serve him. Now that sounds like an easy statement, fear the Lord and serve him. But, good speech, he tells him what to do, how to do that, right? Put away the gods of your fathers. Okay, and then your lives will change as you leave here. So, he's helping them out. If we put those gods away, move on, our lives will be better as we move forward. And Joshua, very specifically speaking, because his life will end soon, and he knows that, he wants them to be prepared. Okay? Continues on in verse 15. Joshua's saying, you put those away, he says what he's going to do, right? He states that he will serve the Lord, he and his house, because there's many idols to chase, right? Again, we talked about graduation, some of you may remember some of those idols that you chased graduating, after graduating high school, just the fun of college, the striving for the degree, right, to succeed, to earn more scholarship money, right, to be top in the class, to be the best, whatever it is, activity you're a part of. Right? Those could be idols, right? If they consume our life, and if we put everything away and focus just on that, it can consume our life. Right? And we pray that the graduates will, will be protected against that, and they will see that coming and be prepared to not let that happen. So Joshua is clearly stating, he's going to put those idols away. He's asking his people and his leaders, you do it with me. Okay? You do it with me. Let's get rid of them. Okay? The people respond. Joshua says, this is what I want you to do. The people give an answer, right? They strongly support Joshua. This is a good speech. Like, it's going well. Joshua's like, we're going to put those gods away, and we're going to follow one God. And the people are saying, yes, that's what we're going to do. Good job, Joshua. We agree with you. Let's do it. Okay, so this is going well so far. Okay, the people are on board with what Joshua is saying. Right? Now, I don't know if they were recognizing, yeah, that's us, yeah, we do worship too many gods, I don't know. They were totally admitting their fault, but they realized that sounds good. Right? And you may find yourself doing that as well in your new situation at college, in classes and things like that. A professor may be teaching something new. You may be hearing it and think, yeah, that sounds good. I like that. Let's do that. Right? You kind of find yourself going along pretty, pretty easily. So they are clearly on board with Joshua. That was in verse 16, right? It said, the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. In other words, we won't do that. We're going to follow God just like you are, Joshua. We're on your side. We're with you. Okay? They acknowledge all that God has done. Right? That's a great way to put those idols aside, isn't it, sometimes? To acknowledge all those things that God has done. Remember all the things he's done. Graduates, for you too, as you come to this day, to think of all the things that God has done for you your life so far. I know it's been a short life, but you guys have had a lot of great things happen so far, right? To remember that God allowed all those things to happen, right? And thank Him for that. And as you are thanking God, it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to put another idol in that place, right? If we're thank, thanking God and loving Him, then that will be at our forefront. So we may find ourselves doing the same thing, um, but they continue on. Joshua speaks again. They say, we're going to follow God. Here's what Joshua said. This is a little bit, might catch off guard in verse 19. 
They say we're going to follow God. He says, you are not able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God, he is a jealous God. All right. Now, the people just said, yes, Joshua, we're following you, we're going to follow God, we're going to do it, and the next words he says is, you aren't able to do it. Now, how is that for an encouraging graduation speech? Here's what I want you to do. Are you on board? Yes. Good luck. You won't be able to do it. That's terrible. <laughs> like, why don't you just tell me that's what I need to do if I can't do it? Right? And Joshua was just trying to warn them. Right? Following God is hard. Most of you in this place, you know that already. Right? There are ups and there are downs. Right? There are times where you may really doubt what's going on. There may be times where you're really excited and all into it. Like, this is great. Following God is easy right now. And there are times where it's really hard and you're not sure you want to do it anymore. Right? As high school students, most of you have probably faced that question already at least once or twice or a few times thinking, do I really want to follow God? Is this really what I want to do? I don't know. Right? Well, that, that may happen again right? as you go to college. You, know, you may run into some times where you doubt, think, I really believe this stuff. Right? It's not always easy. Joshua's trying to warn the people, hey, this is not going to be easy. Okay? And again, all of you can encourage them and help them understand that. It's not easy sometimes. Right? But Joshua's trying to help them out. He's trying to be up front and warn them. Right? And he tells them why it's hard in that verse in 19. He says he's holy and he's jealous. Right? He doesn't like when we worship other gods. Right? He's telling the people, especially the leaders that are in front of him, God doesn't like it when you worship other idols. And that really makes him mad. Like, if you're trying to serve him and you make mistakes, you know what? We do. God knows that. But when you put him aside and worship other things, Joshua's warning him. Because Joshua knows, right? Because he's been up front, the leader, for a long time. He understands how much God doesn't like that. So he's trying to make the people understand God doesn't like that. Right? It's really trying to warn him. Don't let these other idols come into your life. Let's get rid of them. Let's put them aside. Let's get rid of them today. Right? This is a serious matter. Okay? This is a serious matter. So just while we're on the topic of that, what other idols do we have that sometimes get in the way? Right? Movies, maybe television, sports or activities. Right? I, mean, I know youth group, we talk about this a lot. And as a parent, I'm cognizant of it. As a Dealing with the youth, I notice it a lot. Sometimes it makes me really nervous, right? You consider how much time we spend doing activities and how much time do we spend reading our Bibles or spending time in prayer. It's really skewed for most of us adults too, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're guilty in that too sometimes, right? We spend a lot of time doing other things. Like I always try to tell the students, those things we mentioned aren't necessarily bad, right? Being in band isn't bad, right? Doing other activities, it's not bad, are they? They're fine. Those activities are fine. But it's guarding against them consuming our lives, right? Where they are A number one, top priority all the time, all day, right? And that's what Joshua's really, he's, he's, again, I guess some of you may understand too, as you move on in life, you become a little more bold and realize, I ain't got that much time left. There's things you need to know. I'm going to tell you, right? Make sure you hear them for me. Right? And that's where Joshua's at. It's like, you guys need to know these idols have got to be gone. We can find ourselves in that same situation. All right. So he warns them. He warns them. He warns them. Verse 21, people respond to him. No, we will serve the Lord. So Joshua gives them the warning. The people say, no, Joshua, we're going to serve the Lord. We're with you. We're going to do it. Right? So this is going well so far for Joshua. They're really on board. So Joshua speaks again. Right? Again, here's what he says in 22. You are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Right? Basically here, he's challenging them to hold each other accountable. Right? He's challenging them to hold each other accountable. Right? As friends that you have here and in other places, you know, we have college students scattered around here that have gone on to college and are home for the summer. You can hold each other accountable. Right? You, know, you can ask, how, how is it going at church, wherever you're at college? You know, what are you learning in chapel? Or what are you learning in <clears throat> Bible study? Whatever it is, right? you can hold each other accountable. Because if I ask, how was church on Sunday? That's a pretty direct question. Like, it's hard to get out of that one. Well, uh, well, let's... Okay, let me 
answer it. So, you know, so you can hold each other accountable, right? You can help do that. And that's what Josh was saying to the people. You are witnesses for yourselves that you're going to do this. You're sitting here saying we're going to put these guys away. Then do it and help each other do it, right? Because we know everything's, a lot of times it's a whole lot easier to accomplish our tasks if we work together, help each other out, right? So that's what Josh was saying. Help each other out. If you're sitting here saying we're going to get rid of those idols, when you get back to your tent, get rid of the idols. <laughs> get rid of them. You just said you're going to do it. Go do it. Right? Hold each other accountable. Right? In verse 23, he says it again. Then put away the foreign gods that are among you. Put them away. But really what he's saying is get rid of them. Okay, Get rid of them. All right? Don't leave the little trinket sitting. Oh, we won't worship anymore. We're just going to put it, you know. We were looking for this earlier. <laughs> Side note, you know why it's up here? Because I put it here last Sunday. Because I've been friends reading and I turned this... All right. That's totally irrelevant. But... <laughs> we were looking for it earlier. There it is. But anyway, I know what I was saying. So, I put the idol away. I still had it, right? I didn't really get rid of it. I didn't really put it away. I just moved it. Right? Josh was saying, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Right? Get it going. Don't, don't walk in the tent and see it, or you're cleaning up like, oh, there's that idol. No. Disappear. Disappear. Okay? It's a firm choice. One commentary read said it this way. It said, a firm choice that that generation made, and that this generation must choose as well. I think that's a neat way to put it. It's a firm choice that that generation made, and that this generation must choose as well. And we can ask these graduates to do this all we want, right? And it's, it's, it's easy to say, hey, focus on God, put away those idols, stay strong. I mean, we can say that. We can all tell them, right? But the real challenge, I think, comes when it comes to the adults. You guys that are here behind all of them today and above them up there, right? You're the perfect example for them, what it comes down to, right? You know as well as I do that our students will model you, they will model us, right? They will do what we do, they will say what we say. You've seen all that. You've, you've raised them, you've been around them, you understand how that works. So really, you all are the perfect example for them. Or should I say, we've, we need, want you, we need you to be the perfect example for them, right? So they would see you putting away those idols in your life. They would see you focusing on God first. If they see you do it, let me tell you, they are way more likely to do it themselves, right? As they see you do it. It doesn't have to be family. It could just be friends. It could just be church family, right? The people that you see as you interact with them outside of church and all how all those things go. So this challenge isn't just for the graduates, right? The challenge is for all of us that are here this morning, right? To be examples for them and to be leaders for them. Because we know they're leaders. We've seen them grow. We know they're leaders, right? We've seen them lead, we've seen them grow, we've seen them do some incredible things, and we know that will continue. Right? But, even as leaders, they still need leaders to follow as well, right? There's always, somebody's always following somebody. Right? You might be a leader, but you're following somebody, right? Somebody's leading you. So, as these graduates are stepping out as leaders, let me tell you, they're still looking up to you, they're still following you, they're still looking their paths at what's going on here. I just ask that we would all take this challenge from Joshua, seriously. And we would look to put away the idols for, of our lives. Let's pray.